Hey everyone, I'm Zueb Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. In this video, we'll learn how to create dynamic form controls in Angular using Angular Form Array. Why do we need dynamic form controls? Well, sometimes we don't know in advance how much data the user wants to enter in a form. So for example, we may need form fields such as interests or hobbies. Some users might have two hobbies, others might have five hobbies, and so on. In these cases, we need a way for the user to dynamically add and remove form controls so that they can enter the required number of inputs. Angular Reactive Forms API provides a nice form array class that allows us to do this quite easily. Coming back to our tutorial, we'll be building a form control which allows the user to add as many hobbies as he she wants, something like this. As we change anything in the form array, such as entering data or adding removing controls, the form array value gets updated as well. So let's get started. First, we'll add the Angular Material components with ng add Angular Material. Then we'll add the necessary material modules in our imports. We'll go in app.module and we're going to add our inputs. We have the mat input, mat button, and the reactive forms modules. Great. Let's then create our form array in our app component TS file. We'll call it hobbies array. And this will be a new form array. Now for a form control, we give it an initial value. Here, since we have a form array, we have to give it an initial array of form controls. In our case, we want the user to at least have one hobby. So we'll specify here an array with a single value. That value will be a new form control with an empty value and the required validator because we don't want it to be empty. Okay, with that setup, let's move on to creating some layout for this in our template file. We'll go in our app.component.html file and add a container div first. So let's add a container div, We're giving it a class of container. And for the container class, we'll go in our, in our CSS file and we're going to add container here and give it a padding of 32 pixels. Now let's add a title next with the h2 tag and give a suitable caption to it. Now let's add the div with an ng4 directive. We are going to loop through the form array controls. So we'll give here let hobby of hobbies array dot controls. Inside of this, we'll simply add a new mat form field control and an input with a mat input directive. Lastly, we we'll also need to add the form control directive with hobby as we have specified above. So in short, we are just using the form array controls to generate the form fields in our form. Let's test this out. Okay, yes, we can see just one input form control here because that was the initial value we provided. So how do we add a new input control on the UI? Since we have bound it with our form array, we just need to add a new form control there and it should show up. So let's add a mat icon button besides the input form field to add a new control. To do that, we'll have to add some style and make the div into a flex row. So let's add a class of input row to the div, input row. And let's go in our CSS file and give a class of input row and specify it as display flex and also align items to center. Next, let's add the button itself. We'll start with specifying a button and this would be a mat icon button. And for the mat icon, we're going to specify add underscore circle. Next, we'll also give it a color of primary because this is the main function. We also only want to show it on our last form control. So we'll add a declaration in the ng4 loop with last as is last. And then we'll add an ng if condition with is last to our button. Lastly, to make all of this work, let's add the event handler on click. We'll add a function called add input control. Let's add the code for this in our TS file. We'll add a new function called add input control. 
and all this function does is to just access the hobbies array and use the push function to add a new form control with the same validators and initial values. Let's test this out now. Great. So let's try adding it. We can clearly add new controls with our button. But of course, we also need to allow the user to remove a control. So let's add another icon button here. You'll specify a button as before. We'll make it a matte icon button. But for the icon, we'll specify as remove underscore circle. Also, we'll give the color as worn because this is a negative connotation. Let's lastly add the click event handler and we're going to bind a function called remove input control. Now, since here we'll need to tell the function which control to remove, we need to add an index to our ng for loop. So we'll add index as idx in our for loop and then we'll pass the idx in our function here. Great. Now let's move to our code to add this functionality. We're going to create a new function, remove input control with a parameter of index. And the form array class provides a really simple function called remove at. So we are going to do this dot hobbies array dot remove at and give the index inside of it. So that's it. Now let's test this out. Great. So one thing we want to change here is to change the order of the remove button so that it comes before the add button so that they can all be in one line. So great. Now they're on in one line and yes, we can remove our controls. But wait, can we remove all our controls? Let's test this out. Oops. So that's a problem. We now have no way to add the control back again. So let's add a small ng if on our delete button to only show it when there are more than one control in the form array. So we'll do hobbies array dot length and greater than one. Great. Let's test this again. Let's add a new control. Okay. And when we remove our controls, we can remove it except when it is the first one. Lastly, Let's also verify if you're getting the right value out of the form array. We'll go in our app.component.html and we'll add another heading below this and then a div. And we're going to listen on hobbies related value changes with the async pipe. And we'll also use the JSON pipe to show the value. Testing this out, we can now see our form array value getting updated whenever you make any change to it. So if you add it, it's going to get updated. And if you change its value, it's going to show the latest value as well here. And that's it for this tutorial. So as you can see, form arrays are pretty useful when you want to create form controls on the fly in Angular. You can use this to build dynamic quizzes with different multiple choice questions or pretty much any form which requires variable number of inputs. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.